Today I'd like to talk about the sickness, wellness, fitness continuum. If you can imagine a rainbow, at one end we have sickness, moving to the middle here we get to wellness, and then at the far end we have fitness. You can measure wellness, obviously the absence of disease is what defines wellness and we can measure where we're at in terms of that continuum by a number of metrics. We can use blood pressure, we can use body fat percentage, triglycerides, HDL and LDL cholesterol, bone density, and blood sugar as well, as factors that can see where we sit upon that continuum. The further we are towards fitness, so the better those numbers are, and it may be that some metrics are better than others, we may have better muscle mass, um, but high levels of blood sugar, so we need to look at all of those metrics combined. But the further we are towards fitness with those metrics, the further we are away from sickness. And that's what we're doing when we're working on our fitness. And I know that everyone's number one priority when coming to the gym is not necessarily to be healthier, although they may say that it's often to look better naked. But underneath of that, we all want to be healthier and we want to build a buffer against chronic disease. Obesity and inactivity are one of the key factors that contribute towards us getting chronic disease, such as coronary heart disease, diabetes, cancer, dementia, liver and kidney disease. All of these, the risk is increased by us being overfat and inactive. If we can improve our fitness, and if we include in there our diet, nutrition, we are building ourselves a big buffer away from these chronic diseases. In addition to that, we are improving our immune function at this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. That is crucial, obviously, to have a stronger immune response to help fight off such diseases and viruses that come about. And also, we are going to build strength and improve our joint function. So we're going to have better muscular system and a better system of joints as well. So that can reduce our risk of muscular skeletal issues. One of the most common reasons to see a health professional nowadays is for muscular skeletal issues. So let's look at, first of all, the chronic disease, because I know one of the arguments that people come about when you're talking about getting fitter, looking at your diet, cutting down on the alcohol, cutting out smoking, is that everyone's got an art barrel who has lived to 95, smoking 20 a day, drinking two bottles of wine and never moving off the sofa. I like to think of, I think the best analogy for thinking about chronic disease is it's like a lottery. Everyone has a chance of getting some form of chronic disease in their life and it's influenced by a series of factors and that is obviously your genetics, but also lifestyle factors. We all have, let's say, one ticket to start with, and some of us may have more because of our genetics. But if we are treating our bodies badly and we're eating badly and we're not being active, we're not doing everything we can to help to keep ourselves on that fitness side of this continuum, we're effectively buying ourselves more tickets in this sickness lottery. And I don't want to buy more tickets to give myself a better chance of getting chronic disease. I want as few chances as possible. We want to build that buffer. And that's why it's so important to be working on our fitness. And that's why we have nutrition as one of our key factors here at CrossFit. Because nutrition is huge in reducing some of those numbers such as body fat percentage and changing your HDL and LDL cholesterol levels, blood pressure numbers as well. Um, blood sugar numbers, so influenced by your diets. Just coming to the gym, trying to look better naked is going to be one thing, but if we're not looking at the other factors as well, we're not doing everything we can to get fitter and build that buffer against disease. And I, for one, feel that is really, really important. Every year, older I get, the more that becomes a priority for me. And in terms of muscular skeletal issues, because a lot of people will come back and say, well, hang on, I'm more likely to get injured 
training than if I sit on the sofa. And that's not the case because what exercises such as CrossFit do, functional movements do, is they are an excellent tool of screening. Dr. Kelly Sterrett talks about this a lot. And that CrossFit is one of the best tools for screening the body because you're going through such a multitude of movements that you will often find little niggles that maybe you wouldn't have discovered early doors. And you can treat those niggles early and improve that joint function before it becomes a real severe problem. And people often think that you have to be moving heavy weights, you have to be doing advanced gymnastic skills. You can be moving a PVC pipe through a snatch and you may identify you have problems getting your shoulder into external rotation, you have problems getting your spine to extend in the thoracic spine region without losing your abdominal brace there. So many movements, it's so easy to start identifying problems in your moving patterns. And it's our job as coaches to help you identify errors in your movement and fix those errors to prevent against injury. And it might not be injury that's coming from the gym, but it's just injury through life. Because if you're constantly working with a body that is dysfunctional, eventually that is likely to break down. We want to discover the problems before they start breaking down, correct them and build a stronger you. Stronger that's going to be just more mobile throughout your later years. How many people have an elderly relative that struggle to get up out of the chair, struggle to get, if they fell down on the floor, would you feel confident with the elderly relative to be able to get up the floor easily or would they be stuck down because a lot of the health problems we have when you're older is, yeah, falling over is one of the major causes of death. It's a, it's a first factor that leads to other complications further down the line. We want to be strong so that when we get older, we are able to still do as much as possible. I know for me, when I get to 70, 80, 90, I want to be an active 70, 89 year old. I don't just want to live an additional 20 years, but be dysfunctional throughout those 20 years. And that's one of the reasons why I train as well, is to help prevent disease and help make sure that I can keep being active with my kids, maybe with grandkids in the future, for years and years to come. And I think that needs to be up there on your projects and that needs to be front and center when you're thinking about how you're going to be training and how you're going to be eating day by day, because that's a great motivator for you to think, okay, I'm building a buffer for the future. I'm making myself bulletproof, I'm making myself resilient, and I'm building a strong body that's going to be able to cope with life for many years to come. And that's something I've become more and more passionate with over the years, and I want to keep pushing that with the guys that come here to CrossFit, is to make sure you realize that this is not just about moving heavy weights, looking cool, and getting buff, but it's also about making sure that you're building a healthy future for yourselves. If you've got any questions about what I've talked about today, or you want some more information, or maybe you just want me to answer some questions about your health and fitness, please drop a message in the comments below or drop me an email at jeremy at and I'm happy to help. Good speaking to you guys.